What's going on guys? Today we got a lot of news to cover. Sorry I'm a day late, there's been a lot going on over here, but we're gonna get through what we can and uh, then by the time this comes out, there should also be the state of play coming out that day and so Thursday's video will be us talking about that and we'll do the list and stuff for next week, okay? So let's get started. First up is Focus Entertainment. Now, these guys are known for like a number of other titles. They're kind of a double A developer, which is a nice spot that not a lot of people fill, but they came out with the change of their chief executive officer. They are rebranding and becoming Pull Up Entertainment, I think is how you're going to say it. It's got the P on either end capitalized, so I don't know if they're trying to make it sound different, but Pull Up Entertainment. Focus Entertainment sounds a little better to me, but you know, whatever. It's a kind of funny little thing happening in gaming space. They're changing their names, changing their, their CEO. So I good for them, I guess. I think they fill a nice little void in the gaming sphere. And so good to have them around. I hope they do well. Next up is a rumor, according to Game Rant, that a new leak shows Epic Games joining the subscription model. Basically saying that what they've seen is that they would soon announce a subscription model. What that would entail, I mean, maybe that's for their free games that they've been given out that you now join into the subscription for whatever fee, or perhaps it's they are developing their own, you know, Game Pass competitor. I don't know, but either way, it's. This is a rumor, so don't take it as fact yet, it's just kind of what's around. But I wouldn't be surprised, the subscription model seems to be a good add-on because it gives monthly recurring revenue. And so, uh, I think there's a pretty decent chance that this is gonna come true. All right, you want something funny? How about this? Whew, that's a rough design if I've ever seen one. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know why they even added Joker to begin with. I feel like he was kind of unnecessary, but man, that design is rough. Whew. Anyway, moving on. As I said at the top, there is a PlayStation State of Play today, Wednesday. And so we will talk about that on Thursday, uh, given time to think about it and see what happens. But they've already announced that Rise of Ronin, Stellar Blade are going to be there along with around 15 other games, around 40 minutes long. So this is a good one. This is a big time and we want to make sure we're there. So that's at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 o'clock Eastern, wherever you're at. So you know, do that math, but it uh, should be a good show. I'm looking forward to it. Next up, uh, is this is kind of a weird one. So Suicide Squad came out. 30th or 31st for the early access, I can't remember which one, three days, whatever, and then it comes out officially on the 2nd. However, there are no reviews for it because nobody got a code. IGN was the first one I saw at least who said that, but nobody seems to have gotten a code. That's odd, right? And if you take that in conjunction, it also seems that Grand Blue Fantasy Relink didn't send codes ahead of time either. Persona 3 Reload's got codes coming in and all these reviews coming in with super high Metacritic. I think it's hitting 90 right now, which is awesome. But neither one of these games sent codes out to reviewers. I have heard from many sources that Grand Blue is a great game and so it was really silly for them to not send codes. Suicide Squad seems to be hitting kind of on either end of the spectrum, right? Some people are coming out saying it's amazing, some people say it sucks. It all kind of depends, but so maybe you get that, but usually when a game doesn't send codes ahead of time, at least to the bigger reviewers like IGN and GameSpot and, and such, it's a sign of a bad game, right? That they don't want it getting out too early. I'm hopeful that that's not the case of these games, but it very well might be. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled. I would probably hold off and wait a few days just to make sure if you're not already invested. I will be getting Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. We'll be talking about it here, so if you have questions, just stay tuned and we'll talk about it, all right? I won't be playing Suicide Squad, so check out some other channels. I recommend Skill Up is a good one for, uh, he's on the positive side, but he's pretty balanced in his opinion usually, so uh, that's a good one to watch. But whoever you find that you enjoy, check out their video. It's not gonna be here. <laughs> All right, next up is Pal World. And this is kind of a whole cacophony, right? We've seen all kinds of stuff from the sales numbers all the way up to what, like 8 million now, 
uh, is at least the last one they said. It might, I'm sure it's higher, but they haven't announced another number yet. But it was eight million in like less than six days or something, which is crazy. And then this whole thing with Pokemon came out. Now you have to be careful here because people are saying, "Oh, Pokemon is going after Power." Well, it, we all know that clearly they are going to be looking at the Power World designs. However, Pokemon Company very meticulously worded their response, and it does not say Power World in there. It doesn't say the developer. It doesn't say the publisher. It says that we will look at other games. Now, we've also heard from you know their old legal department head who said that there used to be you know thousands of Pokemon Light games every year and they would deal with them all the time. The other thing too is you have to remember that Pokemon is iterative of other examples. Look at this right here, it's Dragon Quest monsters that came out before Pokemon look pretty similar, don't they? Right, so you have to be careful here. It is a common thing in entertainment of all kinds, books, movies, video games, art, all of it, where we take something that was created and iterate on that and make our own thing of it. We see it in music as well, right? It's in all the entertainment forms. We have to remember that all entertainment is iterative, right? Even those Dragon Quest designs that came out before Pokemon came from mythological stories uh, of Greek and all these different myths, right? I mean, these things have been around for centuries, for, for millennia. I mean, these, these really have been around and so to say that, oh, the Pokemon is completely unique, well, no, it's not. However, we also have to look at the other side. It is one thing to iterate on a design. It is another thing to blatantly copy that design, right? And then Power World seems to kind of be walking this line because you can find online people who have taken the Pokemon and, and the pals and you know put them next to each other and said look I mean it's clearly the face or the legs or whatever else now that to me isn't as big a deal they've changed the type and the color and they've added different things around them and so that is iterative but there are some where you know certain assets look like they were just straight drag and drop now that's a problem right so I don't know how you answer all of that. However, I will say the AI conversation, uh, where people are saying that they've used AI to, you know, just rip all these designs. We, you have to be careful with that. Is it possible? Yes, yes, it is possible. With the new AI tools out there, it's possible. There's not enough proof to just jump on that bandwagon, right? And you wanna be very careful about accusing people of that without proof. I guess what I'm saying here is clearly 100% there's in there's high degree of influence. Is there some copy pasta going on? I think that it's pretty easy to say yes, right? There there is at least some of that happening. The AI one though, I think we have to leave for people who are qualified to make those connections or not because it's really difficult for, for us lay people to know that and accusing someone of not doing work and using AI instead of doing the art themselves even if that included ripping some designs I think is, is pretty bold and we need to be careful of doing that right so TLDR Pokemon is going to investigate whether there was any theft here I doubt very much that there will be any. It's possible that some of these PAL designs will change very slightly. An eye a little more slanted or a little more open, a mouth a little more wide or narrow, things like that if you know Pokemon is able to say, hey, this is too close. But other than that, I see very little happening there. So I, I could totally be wrong, but I don't think so. Uh, I think that little ch tweaks are all we'll see come out of this so we'll see what happens okay and next up is kind of the sadder news right um we covered in i think it was week two the layoffs happening in gaming space and unfortunately they are ramping up if anything from last year last year was bad enough there was a stupid amount of layoffs in the gaming space 
and already without even leaving January, we are rolling up on that. I think we're maybe 25 to 30 percent, something like that. Uh, too much, too much. This last week, uh, at least in, in that realm, Riot Games, that's League of Legends, basically are, are shuttering their gaming stuff outside of their main hubs. So we've talked about them like Song of Nunu or there's the, the other one coming up, Bandle Tale. They've had some of these games that are outside of that League of Legends and, and their main stuff there, right? And it seems like they're either completely closing that or, or bringing that way down. And they laid off 530 people. Embracer Group, which is a case study in betting high and losing big. People are talking about really terrible leadership. I think you gotta be careful there too. Is it possible there's bad leadership? Yes, of course there is. Of course there is, clearly. Lots of people are losing their jobs. Stuff is closing down, they're selling stuff. But what happened is they bet big, believing they were getting this money, and then they did not. And now everyone is paying for it. And that sucks. So this week we heard the Deus Ex team just basically shut down, 97 people out of work. Black Forest Games, which is working on that. The last Ronin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, they laid off 50 people. Rikon Games, which is the studio behind Ruiner, they laid off 60 people. People Can Fly, which is the developer of Outriders, they laid off 30 people. And then the big one is Xbox, who now after acquiring Activision Blizzard, laid off 19 hundred people. Nearly 2,000 people from Xbox lost their jobs in the same month that we hear they are up 33% in profit and have become the second company to be a trillion dollar, you know, whatever that is, trillion dollar profit company. I mean, insane. Now, here's, here's the thing of this, right? For Xbox, as much as we all wanted to believe it would be a good thing, as much as we all wanted to believe that Xbox was going to fix things in Activision Blizzard, anytime there's a merger, there's redundancy, right? You don't need twice the amount of people doing communications. You don't need twice the amount of people doing HR. You don't need twice the amount of people, you know, whatever. And I understand that being some, 1900 is excessive. And I don't know how they manage that in their books and in their stuff to say, yep, 1,900 people can lose their jobs. Activision Blizzard had a lot of personnel problems, right? Remember the whole California suing them for their work practice, the, the horrible treatment of coworkers in there and this kind of fraternity atmosphere that they had created. The, there was a lot of problems in there. So is some of this Xbox cleaning house? It's totally possible right and maybe that's a good thing but from the outside looking in that 1900 people losing their jobs is terrible <laughs> and when you add up all the other studios we're what 2500 plus people losing their jobs having no income anymore some of these are getting good severance packages a lot of them are not riot is actually giving really really good severance packages like i heard six months of pay and medical and helping people to land on their feet, find other jobs. That's pretty amazing. I don't know what Xbox is giving. I'd assume they're giving some severance pay and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know, I haven't heard from that one. So here's the, the long and short of this. Layoffs suck. If, if you've ever had to work or you even like you've grown up with family who works or whatever, losing your job is awful. It's really, really hard on the person, on the family, the stress of it and, and having to reorient your lives to, to find new work it is incredibly difficult. And the amount of, out of these 2,500 people that have families who rely on them and are now scrapping for work is awful. And, and you can't see that as anything but terrible. Are there people in there who maybe should lose their jobs? Maybe, maybe. But we don't know that. And, and so you don't wanna treat it that way. It's just very, very difficult. And so my heart's out to all these people who are losing their jobs. And, and I hope you find work. I hope you land on your feet. I believe that you will. 
And But this gaming industry has got to come to terms with itself. It's got to come to rights because this isn't okay. It's not okay that in, in years where we're having the most amazing output of games and incredible revenue poured into these companies for the people who make them to be insecure in their job placement is wrong. It's just wrong. Okay, well, let's get on to some happier news, right? There's still good things going on, so let's let's think about that for a second. So, some games released this last week. We got Tekken 8 and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, both of which came out with stellar reviews. Metacritic's at, I believe, 90 for Tekken 8, and I think also 90 or 91 for Like a Dragon. If not, they're close to that but just blowing people out of the water, super well reviewed. People are loving them, doing really awesome. We have coming up, this is the start of the craziness. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which we don't have reviews, like as I said, they didn't send out codes. Persona 3 Reload is coming out on the second. They did send out codes, and I think as of right now, it's sitting at a 90. Look at this, people were saying this was gonna be a down year, and we have like four or five with like above 90 on Metacritic, I mean, Kind of insane. Suicide Squad also comes out this week on the 2nd. That's kind of the biggest question mark, I think, right now. But um, my hope is that people will be able to enjoy the game. That's what you want, right? Uh, so those are games releasing this week. Again, on this channel, we'll do Grand Blue Fantasy, and then Persona 3 will come later. It won't be right away, but we will get to that. Um, so look out for that. We'll do at least a stream or two of Grand Blue Fantasy, as well as kind of my early thoughts and I'll do a review at the end. If there's more you guys want, let me know and I'll try to dig into that. Same with Persona 3, we'll kind of do initial thoughts and then a review at the end. And maybe, you know, if people want streams or whatever, we could do some of that as well. We also will continue uh, with the Return to World. And uh, maybe Power World once in a while, I don't know. I, I kind of checked out and there's so much going on, but. Now, the kind of free games. Uh, we got, first off, I'm gonna kick Amazon out. They, they are still giving free games, but they're all weird little unknown ones that I've never heard of that look funky. So I'm sure there's still a possibility of something good happening there. And if I ever see one, I will let you know. But at least for now, it's kind of not worth the time. So Epic is also right now in the smaller stuff, which I think if they're kind of you know, bleeding money, then they need to tone it down, and they have. So Infinity Factory is what's in there right now. And then Doors Paradox is coming up next, and that's very similar. It's kind of like an adventure puzzle game. Game Pass, you got Go Mecha Ball that came out. Persona 3 Reload is coming on the 2nd, but you can preload now. So if that's where you're going to play it, you can do that. Uh, PS Plus, we should know after this video releases. Um, probably before or during the the showcase we'll find out but we know foam stars so that's coming the six for sure as one of the monthly games and then we should get the other two uh sometime today if you're watching this the day of uh we also then have the P the state of play and so we'll be talking about that if you're watching this on wednesday we'll be talking about that tomorrow watch that or you can hang out and i'll tell you all about it the next day okay for now that's gonna be it, okay? I know we have, I have had a couple other segments, but I'm kind of retooling this as you might have noticed with the way it's getting set up. I'm trying to figure out a best way to make this happen where it's doable for me and as professional looking as possible. And I'm finding the way I did it to be difficult to do that. So I'm gonna be shifting and changing. So as you see things that you think are done well or not let me know right so that i can continue to tweak and make things better indie spotlight will still be a thing but i'm going to make that its own thing i've done that before on the channel if you've been here for a while you've seen those and i think i want if we're gonna do an indie spotlight i want to do a little bit more in depth and really talk about what they're doing what the game is and give it its time to shine so Still, please, if you know of indies, you see something that looks really cool, send it my way, and I can put it on the list of ones to do that for. Um, but we'll 
that will be its own thing. All of that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for sticking with me and, you know, as I <laughs> couldn't keep up with it this week. But we should hopefully be back on track by next week. Everything should be falling back into place. So that's my goal anyway. So again, thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit that like button as that helps out with the almighty algorithm. Make sure you comment down below all the different things, what something that spoke to you, whether it's the Pokemon crap with Pal World or it's, you know, the layoffs or anything like that. And then if you're new, make sure you subscribe and we're, we're working towards a thousand. We're a little, we're kind of inching there, right? It's a little slow, but we're going to get there. It's going to be good. So, one more time, thank you so much for watching, and good hunting.